currently backstage here getting ready for Off Centered, which happened on Wednesday night. Go back and watch it if you missed it. Dustin's big old head up over there somewhere. Right there. Currently in the 30 second countdown. Thursday morning here in the 302, and I know that you're saying to yourself, Thursday morning, damn, that video was recorded a long time ago. But hey, that's just how it is. I just don't get them uploaded quickly. So any cards that I show in this video, make sure you go to Instagram. You'll see the cards posted probably over a week ago, as late as these videos are getting out. But guys, this morning I woke up to a completed deal for all of the Sam Darnolds. Remember, I invested about $1,000 on the dot going into last season on Sam Darnold. All these select raw copies here. Got two RPAs here, including a big old flawless. And remember, I sold enough to break even when he got second string in, on the 49ers because people thought Brock Purdy was going to miss time. They actually were buying thinking that Sam Darnold was going to get some starting time. Anyway, I ended up breaking even there. And then today, I'm moving out the rest of the Sam Darnolds for $225 cash and a 2018 Silver Prism PSA 9 of Luka Doncic. I know what you're saying. You're only getting $225 cash, but that Luka, I'll be able to sell very liquid for about $400 easily net. So that's almost as good as cash. So you're looking at me getting $6.25 for those remaining Sam Darnolds. One other remaining Sam Darnold just went on eBay, you saw, in one of my previous videos for over $50. Bucks. So I'm looking at getting $675 back after breaking even. So I'm in $1,000. bucks. i am going to make about $650 to $675. And it has been about a year. But hey, I guess I'll take that turnaround. It's better than breaking even, and it's always definitely better than losing. On my way to drop the Sammy D's off at the post office, and one thing I want to address is being called out in my own comments about my Veriswap inventory being overpriced, because that is something that I often complain about is trying to make deals with people who have their cars just astronomically overvalued. My answer to that is a majority of my inventory doesn't have everyday comps. I sell rare cards, I sell cards with very low pops, and in most cases, my comp may be the last comp on that card, which means now I'm looking to set the new market. And to be quite honest, I would actually say that my prices are, are, are fair. I'm not right at comp on, on, any, on anything, and I don't think anybody is, but there is a difference between being slightly overpriced and negotiable and being massively overpriced and firm. Typically, I may be somewhere in between 50 to even 150 overpriced on certain cards, depending on their value, Where I, but I'm negotiable, where I see a lot of people double the price on their cards and not willing to move down. That's all I really got to say about that. If you don't like it, don't make deals with me. You can ask anybody who's done deals with me. I'm very fair. I get a lot of deals done, so I'm not even going to sweat that anymore. Bye-bye, Sammy. I'm going to miss you. Arrived home to some mail packages. Thank goodness Sammy D had me depressed. Do not bend. Bend who? Bend them? Oh, damn. Wait, no, nah, don't bend them. Ah. Ah. I had to go out to the old local market, get me some blackberries, chicken quarters. Again, I don't get my meat at the supermarket. I get all my stuff like locally farm raised organic shizzle and some more sirloin. Also, got some lunch. Barbecue chicken and rice and some yucca cheese balls from my favorite Puerto Rican spot downtown. A prolific case hit out of Panini Black of Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform. I'm curious to see what the condition on this is going to be because they're condition sensitive. So I'm going to have to grade this one out. Thinking high grade in a slab that there's some potential with these types of cards. I didn't think you liked barbecue chicken. Stopping by the Figgity Fee Bizzle real quick. There's some auctions about to go off that I'm interested in. And I want to show you guys the main reason why I don't like entering my max bid early. A lot of times I'll lose an auction at the end and, and people will be like, well, you know, you should have put your max in. But what scares me on a card like this, now mind you, I'm willing to pay $150 bucks for this Anthony Richardson case hit. I like the design of the card. I believe the player will have some hype. Nine bidders, 17 bids, and I go into the bid history. And they're very low feedbacks. The highest feedback is actually 22. And then you have three and four feedback bidders. 
all the way back from the beginning. The last big feedback was at $76 with almost 2,600 feedbacks. So this scares me to the point to where I don't want to put my max bid in early because I will probably get run up to my max as opposed to where if I sit here and watch the auction end, I can put in my bids one at a time um, and get up to 150 and maybe it does get outbid. But the potential of getting it cheaper than my max bid is worth sitting here the last 20 minutes and watching this auction. Always be aware of who you're bidding against, what kind of feedback. Are you uh, competing with shill bidders because they may run the card up on you and you may actually, you know, you may pay over market or pay what the card would actually truly go for. Also, to show you the back of this card up close, you can see where it looks like there's some scratches on the back. This is a metallic card, uh, but they do have a plastic um, s uh, protective cover on them like the old Topps Finest and things like that. I do take my own advice and I did reach out to that seller and ask them if that was scratches on the top load of the card and got my answer. So I will be watching that, hopefully putting in a bid. Let's go ahead and get into a topic for today's video. And that is gonna be what you don't see from card flippers. What we look for in our society is we look for sex appeal, sex sells, and we look for the car crash, the train wreck, you know, the things that's gonna make you say, oh my God. Unfortunately, that's the way it is, but that's the, things that, that's the thing that gets attention because that's the things that are exciting, whether positive or negative. And you can apply that to the sports card market as well, especially for people doing content. What you see a lot of is big sales. And not only do you see big sales, you see big losses. People like to advertise. Intense deal in their thumbnail. People like to say, I spent $20,000 at Burbank last week, right? And that's all fine. And, they, and, and, and maybe they probably did. But the thing is, is that's all that you see. Or they take a big loss and say, I ate a $20,000 brown bag lunch on so-and-so player. You are going to eat that cat poop. I will not eat cat poop. You will eat cat poop. Ron Burgundy says, no. You will do it immediately. No. But it's always the big money stuff that makes the headlines because that is what drives the market. This uh, false narrative that everything is big sales and big losses. But I'm here to tell you right now, the majority of your flipping and a majority of where your percentage profits are made, and I'm talking percentage, it's going to be lower money, but it's going to be higher percent, is on lower end cards. You can go out and you can buy nice lower end cards of really good players that are affordable and they have collectability. That's what is always most important. I stress this in other videos, but I just don't think I can say it enough. The cards and the players need to have collectability. It can't just always be prospects that are going to be hit or miss. But you can go and buy Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady and LeBron James and players like that that people really collect. And you can find nice, cheap cards of them that, yes, have everything that people want. A slab in a PSA 10. You can buy them raw with serial numbers. Aesthetics and eye appeal is most important because when you're looking at a lot of these inserts nowadays, a collector wants a card that looks cool. They don't want a base prism rookie in their set. Yes, they might want one but they're not gonna want multiple base, massively produced cards in their collection. They're gonna want aesthetically appealing, serial numbered with some sort of rarity, and nice condition. That's what they're gonna want. And when we're coming into the type of, I would say, economic status that we're in right now in the country, people say the market's gonna crash. Oh my God, people are not gonna be in the hobby. And that's not true either. Collectors and people in the hobby will always be here because they didn't intend on doing this for money. People do this because it is their escape from, oh my God, the economy is collapsing. They will just readjust their budget to where they'll buy what they can afford. So you always want to have cards that people can afford or you completely eliminate a demographic of people that you can sell your cards to. Let's talk supply and demand, but if there's no demand, then it doesn't matter. So when there's demand on lower end cards, because that's what people can afford and people still want to collect, that's what you're going to need to have. And I know buying a card for $40 and selling it for 50 is not sexy. It's not going to make it into a YouTube video. I know if you buy a card for a hundred bucks and you take a loss at 85, I bought a Baker Mayfield. I took a $50 loss on a couple weeks ago and then I put it into a video. That wasn't sexy. That wasn't like, oh my God, he lost his ass. I got to watch this video or, oh my God, high dollar. I got to watch this video. But it's the reality and the truth of flipping cards. It is a grind, like people say. And that's because the grind might be $10, $20, $30. Take a $15 loss and now you've stepped back a little bit, but you keep snowballing and your wins outweigh your losses. Eventually, you can take some of that money and put it into a higher end card and you can try to flip. 
But when I talk about percentages, I talk about it is easier for a card that is $20 to double in value to 40 and give you 100% return than it is for a card that is $200 to double to 400 or a card that is 2000 to double to 4000 okay? So yes, that's bigger money, but you're not going to get those easy 100% returns. Your percentage value and your limited losses are in lower end cards and you will move more of them. They will move more fluidity and more liquidity, if that's even two words. Obsidian Purple Etch, PSA 10, numbered out of 75 of LeBron. This is a population of four, 110 bucks. I love the value on cards like this when I can pick up high-end players in cheap slabs that have a high collectability. It's a color match. Just a great design on some of these cards. They just look really, really good. A cheap low-end Tom Brady insert that I showed in a video a couple weeks ago in a PSA 10. This is low pop and it's very aesthetically appealing to the eye. I picked this up for $32 and like I said, I can't stress enough if I was to throw this out into a showcase with 60 bucks on it, I would sell it for 50 to a collector who was on a budget that wanted a really nice Tom Brady card either for themselves or for a gift or for their kid or something like that. This is just something that would fall into the ballpark of something that somebody could afford that looks really, really nice and is already graded in a 10 to where they don't have to do any work. Which is only a $20 win. And that's not, oh my God, type money. But those wins add up. It's got an Amazon package and my second steroid pack. <laughs> Don't worry guys, it was just a pack of bubble mailers for my cards. I got some auctions in tonight. Also, this is Black Sand Beach near Vik, Iceland. I've actually sat on that rock right there. I got a case hit, Travis Kelsey picked this up for 20 bucks. Got a case hit, Firestorm of Aaron Rodgers picked this up for 10 bucks. If I couldn't flip this for 20 and this for like 35 in a raw condition, even though my full intentions are on getting these graded and making bigger money, then I would wrestle that guy with the mask on. You're talking shit? Also got a fired up of Anthony Richardson. This one's numbered out of 199. So again, super cheap raw card. I'll flash what I paid up there for it because I don't remember. But this is a rookie insert. I appeal, rookie card, numbered, cheap pickup. And a CJ Stroud, everybody's favorite in the market right now it seems. Rookie card insert, playing with fire. Numbered out of 175. I believe this was 30 bucks. And people in the real world want these cards. If you don't believe me, go to a local show. Not a big gangbuster show like you see a lot of the vlogs and stuff being shot at uh, by your favorite influencers. But go to a local show. A show where there's not huge amounts of money in the room. And you will see the types of cards that people are buying. You will see what the real collector or the real person in the hobby that can, can afford. Real is definitely the wrong word. We're all real. We're all flesh and blood. I guess what I mean is, um, you know, the average collector, which is makes up the majority, even the average budget. And yes, I do it. I don't just talk about it. I'm going to show you guys some cheaper, low budget stuff that I've been picking up on eBay this week. Not all of it has arrived. I'll put some pictures up here, give you some prices. The list has gotten full once again, guys. Um, a, a Travis Kelsey pedigree case hit out of Origins, 20 bucks. Great card. I'll get it graded. I'll sell it raw. Just depends on how it looks when it gets here. And that applies to all these cards. I uh, picked up a Kelsey Arcade Mode from Panini's Plates and Patches, numbered out of 25 for 35 bucks. Numbered out of 25 of a collectible player like Kelsey. For $10, I got a Mahomes Playing with Fire insert from Phoenix, numbered out of 199 and it is a color match. $10 for a numbered Patrick Mahomes. A Jalen Hurts Black, numbered out of 10 for $16. I can't make this stuff up. A Mahomes Crusade, numbered out of 149, that is also a color match for $20. I picked up two of those. More cheaper Mahomes that are aesthetically appealing. One out of 150 and one out of 50. 18 bucks and 30 bucks. The deals are there. These are cards that you want to, uh, you know, just try to dig up. The thing I would like to encourage you guys to do is go out there and find some content creators that you haven't watched. Look for the guys who set up at the smaller regional shows. Check out some of these vlogs and you will see the types of cards going across the table and the type of money coming across the table for them. It is $10, $20, $30, your small wins. And it is cards like CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson. People do want to prospect on these guys. They do want to own cards of these guys because they believe in them. But their cards on the upper end are so juiced and so pumped 
that they will buy the cheaper affordable cards because that's what they can get their hands on. Whether it's a 15 year old or a 12 year old who wants to spend their allowance on a card or a father buying a card for their son and they can't justify paying hundreds to thousands of dollars for it. I mean, who would is gonna buy these types of cards? Even mothers, we're not leaving you out. We know you like to buy cards for your kids as well. Maybe even for yourself. Don't most girls like find Tom Brady sexy? Update on the Anthony Richardson auction from earlier. I did not win. I was second highest bidder to someone with three feedback. I hope they pay and I hope it wasn't the seller. Freshly shaven and back to wrap the video. Just moved these three cards on Instagram. If you want to know what they are, go follow me over there, flipping underscore Steve. If you want to wait, then they'll be in an upcoming video, which I'll also be talking about some other cards that I recently moved and profited on. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Like and subscribe on the way out, and I'll see you. What you gonna do? What you gonna do with this dragon, huh? You gonna, ooh! What you gonna do, oh!